Fervent Champion. Venerable Knight. All right, and so now we Black Lance Paragons. Again. I think that we did like 16 points of damage with that Corpse Knight. Whoa, that was awesome. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff, and I know you guys are probably sick of seeing this card, but I still love that the companion cost of being able to play Luris is that you have to you know, build a different deck than your typical deck. The ability of it is completely broken. I, I agree with that. And being able to have a free in hand is awesome. But it is really fun to try to play new decks with different play styles. And so I am diving into the deck that typically the way that I build a lot of my decks is I run up against it and it completely destroys me and I try to build like my own version of it. Uh, and so this is the Luris Knights deck, which is just completely busted and awesome. And it is still have issues of, of it being aggro in a deck in a, in a format where there's lots and lots of removal. And so there's some matchups we probably won't be able to win, but there's a lot of other ones that are really good. And the crazy thing here is that it's an aggro deck that is running in three colors. And the reason why we can do that is a couple reasons, but mostly tournament grounds. Tournament grounds, we have an untapped three mana uh, source here, and then we have one tapped version, which is okay. But you can see that mostly we just have so many multicolored uh, uh, things to play with this that we can actually cast a lot of our stuff. One thing though is that Tournament Grounds doesn't let us cast our Unbreakable Formation, our Fight as One, which having Fight as One, our Dire Tactics is really, really nice in this deck, but there's just some really powerful good things you can do with this. Um, the other reason why you can you can go three colors or you know everything is if you do run a little bit slowly we are actually pumping our entire team with inspiring veteran and so having inspired inspiring veteran and being able to bring it back with luris lets us play a little bit more long game as well as like worthy knight knight of the even legion kind of lets us go into a little bit more mid uh, mid game at least uh long game maybe <laughs> we'll see but uh let's go to jump into the gameplay see how this one does for me and yeah wish me luck oh good stretch good stretch all right we're up against kill ink and and yeah, we're gonna keep this. Urban Champion turn one. Venerable Knight also isn't too bad for turn one. We may go that route instead. We do get Stormfist. Uh, let's see here. Let's go Venerable Knight. We're gonna end up shocking ourselves twice for this mana base, but that lets us also leave up Fight as one later on, probably. So I'm kind of okay with it. Is it actually worth using the fight as one to uh, get rid of the Scorch Bitter here? All right, let's go ahead and with Firm of Champion, swing in. Attack in. Plus onto the Vulnerable Knight. We're spending a lot of cards right at the beginning, but we also get a pretty decent board state. Man, all right. Getting rid of Scorch Bitter. Getting lots of stuff onto the battlefield. And then if stuff does die later on, I mean, honestly, with Vulnerable Knight, we're kind of fine with it dying with Luris. So maybe we should have gone for some other stuff, but having another one's not bad. Uh, so let's actually go Vulnerable Knight, Sword of his Crusader, swing in. Hitting for four, that's a lot of damage. All right, down to 15. I mean, we've also shocked ourselves enough time that it's probably worthwhile for them, but now Vulnerable Knight, great blocker for us. We can jump all day long. Okay, stomps the champion. That's cool, that's cool. We are giving them card draw. All right, let's swing in. We're six. Down to eight, okay. Uh, let's go. Do we just want Sky Knight Vanguard? We can go Luris into Fervent Champion. Is that actually worthwhile? The Life Linker might be nice, but let's just go ahead with Sky Knight Vanguard. And we don't actually need that much red mana, so God let's try and pass the turn. So I think our best draw here is Unbreakable Formation. Ooh, let's see if they can play their entire hand. <laughs> It's very possible, and they have a reach creature now. So, Inspiring Veterans would be amazing. Do you swing in? You can put up Bone Crusher Giant as well. Okay. Yep, they built a pretty decent board. Swings in. 
No blocks. Down to 11. Fight is one. There it is. There's unbreakable formation. And we get fight is one. That should be game. Swing in. Whatever one that's they don't block, we get to pump. As long as one of them gets in for more. So they have to block two threes to not die anyway. Okay, target human gets pumped, and then target non-human. Sweet. All right, that was some pretty good running there. A little bit of good draws. Uh, and, and maybe I shouldn't have saved the vulnerable knight earlier on. Again, things going to the graveyard is kind of okay with Lurse, but also like having a big, bit better board state is pretty valuable, as we can see there. Up against Nad Logius, and this looks like a pretty decent hand. Pretty good start. Keeping this. Worthy Knight is really, really good because it typically gets targeted right away and it is something we can definitely uh, keep bringing back. So Fervent Champion, we're losing the race because we're shocking ourselves as we're swinging in, but the whole point is to get their damage, their life total down to, uh, to zero. I was about to say to 20. Hopefully not down to 20, that'd be bad. <laughs> All right, swings in. Um, I think that we'll just swing in and then shock in the Worthy Knight. Going wide seems pretty good against a more beefy deck. This is Team Rare Adventures. They can definitely go really big, really wide. And hurt us lots. No Lucky Clovers. Okay, Love Struck Beast is manageable. Okay, so we're going to go for Corpse Knight. Just kind of go for direct damage here. Each time we play something, we're going to get two points of damage in. So no attacks past the turn. Kind of got our combo set up. So more lands would be great. Not a land. Um, I think that we're going to go for Sky Knight Vanguard. It creates the most bodies for us with Corpse Knight, and we can be swinging in with it. Down to 16. We are getting in damage, and we're going wide enough that eventually we can swing in for a really big hit. So probably just like Inspiring Veteran next turn. Pump everything. We're getting close to actually be, being willing to just swing in. All right. Bounces worthy night. That's kind of fine. It plays Breeze of Power. All right, so we don't get to swing in with Sky Knight Vanguard anymore. Hmm. Yeah, just play Worthy Knight again. No attacks. We could have just swung in with Sky Knight Vanguard to get rid of the Brazen Borrower. I'm not sure we really win the, with the long game, especially with only two lands. Like, this has been pretty terrible running. Love Strike Beast. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. It's kind of stinking good. They still haven't, like, done anything crazy broken yet. They haven't had a Lucky Clovers. Anything like that. Uh, we will Chump Block. Do they have a Bone Crusher? Okay, Tournament Grounds. Not too shabby. All right, so I think that what we what do we want to do? If we get another inspiring veterans, this would be really nice to have. Um, Backlads Paragon is pretty nice too. Like we could actually block a Love Chuck Beast this way. Let's just go um, inspiring veteran and vulnerable knight. Let's see, Knight of the Illusion actually starts growing right now. So let's go ahead and get it out, because we, we are doing uh, four points of damage here. No attacks, pass the turn. Grow the Knight.
And now with Inspiring Veteran, they're a little bit further away from actually just shocking our guys to death. At least like a worthy knight and corpse knight, which are kind of the main pieces here. All right, Brazen Borrower. I feel like he could have done that a little bit earlier. But I mean, okay, that's cool. <laughs> A Brazen Bar were number two. It's th those guys can't actually block that well. They're probably better to be swinging in with. At least one of them. He swings in with a bunch. I am actually kind of okay with this. As long as they don't have too much more on the board, we can actually just swing in. I, I'm not sure if this deck would be playing any flame sweeps or anything like that. I kind of doubt it. Down to 12. Only four blockers. Actually, how close are we to just killing them here? They could have another Brazen Borrower. So we swing in, they block here. We get one more person. We deal, let's see, they block three more. So here, here, here. We get one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I think we wait one more turn. So let's go ahead with uh, Worthy Knight. And then we can probably just flash in Blacklands Paragon whenever we want to. I think we need to uh, hold back blockers for the next turn in case they have Stomp. We can't take six. So yeah, let's pass the turn. They're down to 10. Okay, goes for Stompy. That's fine. And as long as they haven't found a Lucky Clover, we're in a much better shape here. And this is kind of cool to see the other side of this deck. Just having Corpse Knight, just building a wide board. We could start swinging with like Knight of the Even Legion and whatnot, but meh. We probably should have at least swung with a couple of creatures there to kill because they only had brazen bar so all the stuff on the ground would have been fine all right so fervent champion block here chomp here i think we do have to block there All right, Black Lance Paragon. Give this Death Touch and Life Link. Take one more down to eight. So next turn we get to, if we find another one drop, we get to, let's see here, do quite a bit. Brazen Borrower, okay, so we have another one drop now. That is hasty, that's really, really good for us. So we have like six points of damage just on the, in our hand right now. Yeah, I'm so glad Corpse Knight has been stayed alive. I don't, I don't know why they haven't been going after Corpse Knight at all. I mean, I guess having lots of blockers has been helping us with Worthy Knight. Okay, Shock's in and probably going to flash in the Brazen Borrower to go for lethal. They just shocked it in, though, which means that we have lethal in hand. All right, so... Fervent Champion. OK, 
Okay. Down to four. Vulnerable, venerable knight. All right, and so if they have any response, we can backplant Paragon. So let's go ahead and attack in. I just want them to spend their mana as best we can them to do so. All right, and so now we black lands paragons again. Dude, we won with Corpse Knight. Like we don't think I don't think we got any damage that wasn't with Corpse Knight. So that was that was awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, Corpse Knight definitely deserves a slot in here. I like I figured it would like maybe getting like five points of damage in some games, but I think that we did like 16 points of damage with that Corpse Knight. Whoa, that was awesome. Up against Wibu the Whale, and yeah, we'll keep this. This looks perfect. Mm. Dig it, love tournament rounds, love having white mana in our hands still for things like Unbreakable Formation. Next turn, we'll go Worthy Knight, hopefully hit a land for Storm Crusader, Fervent Champion, and then Unbreakable Formation. Mm. I don't think that that's very beatable, especially when we're on the play. Ooh, and the Corpse Knight. All right, Worthy Knight. Swing in, down to 18, past the turn. People have been starting to play a lot more extinction events. Another worthy knight. We corpse knight first then, or after? I guess we try to like mix it up a little bit so that we have a worthy knight in case there is some sort of board wipe here. Dude, Pen Fervent Champion's pump with this deck is actually legitimate every time. It's it's kind of busted. <laughs> okay, down to 14. Let's see. Cry of the Canarium is still in the... Yeah, okay. I'm going to say, we just... Being on the play, having that much stuff on board, and having Lurus to bring things back, like, it's a really difficult position to come back from that point. I know because I have lost to this deck so many times with, with hands like that. Up against Acres, bring it on Acres, and I like the fight as one. Worthy Knight, Inspiring Veteran, start pumping stuff. Double Worthy Knight, also really good. Up against Yorion, that means I'll probably have lots more board wipes than we want to deal with, but we will be able to deal with it. Well, hello there. Ooh, Unbreakable Formation. Going wide with Worthy Knight, Unbreakable Formation. All right, let's just see if we can last that long. We are not on the play, which is rough. A worthy knight, worthy knight number two, fervent champion, swing in for a bit. Four. All right, we just we just have to hope they don't have deafening clarion for the next turn. Now that's that's kind of the dream. I am gonna go aggressive here, so worthy knight. Um, shock in stuff with white mana. We need more white mana. Double Worthy Knight triggers. I mean, next turn, are we? how close are we to just lethal with Unbreakable Formation? And fight as one? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, I mean, we have the lethal swing next turn. Fires of Invention, Shadow Disguise. No. Okay, we have lethal. All right, then. <laughs> All right, yeah, they've cast two spells, so we get the game next turn. Okay, they find the Shadow of the Skies. Yeah, okay. So, uh, shock this in. Tap it right. Unbreakable formation. All attack. Put it on to a Worthy Knight. Fight is one for the lethal points of damage. I think that's exactly lethal. Didn't bring that earlier. earlier. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Dude, all right, that was, oh my goodness, that was sweet. That was the turn four kill. Uh, and they just weren't able to interact on turn four, which I mean, is kind of unlikely. There's so many things to interact, turn three, turn four, and we were on the draw. But like, I feel like we just showed that this deck can beat those ones. Even if there was a board wipe, we still had plenty of stuff to be doing there that would have been it would have been difficult to win, but I think we could have pulled it off. All right, here we go again. All right, keeping this. We don't have any red mana, but knight into worthy knight. And I mean, we have fight as one, which, which can uh, put them both on. And hopefully we find red mana. 
I mean, either red mana or if more things we can play is still good. Oh, another Lurus player. How the heaven are you, sir? I need. I keep forgetting to switch my card backs to the American flag. I like that. That's that. That's there. Makes me happy inside. Uh, this has life link. I am going to get out Worthy Knight over just trying to kill this. No attacks past the turn. It may be better to just try to kill stuff earlier. Is Wayfarer. All right. No blocks. Down to 16. This is going to be a hard one. Urban Champion helps a lot, though. Swing in with Worthy Knight. Should have swung with Urban Champion as well. Shocks. So our only good thing here is the fight is one is kind of meh. Man, that's good. Kai's goes for him with Luris is so busted. <laughs> All right, how many more R's do they have? Oh no. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good at all. <laughs> Oh, drats. Okay, well. Well then. So we chump block. We double block. We fight as one. Yeah, I think this was just too good of a start. Target human, target non human. They still get to get in the life because we didn't pump it up enough, but at this point, we're just trying to survive. <laughs> okay, pass it my turn. Um, Fervent Champion. Do we just shock and play Luris out? We could just hold up Knight of the Evil Legion pump and, and not fight as one as well. Hey, buddy. My buddy decided to come in and join us for a little bit. That's fun. Um, do we just play Luris out? Because then if stuff does die, yeah! bring it back. Oh, yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> um, I, let's just go ahead and pass. There's not even anything in the graveyard, but that, yeah! again, we could probably go. I just don't know how we beat the life gain as well as really big creatures. And Luris. <laughs> and all see the life's bounty for protection for days. <laughs> Alright, buddy. Let's see if we can give you back to mommy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Bye. Alright, I mean... We don't get to really do much, but we will pump here. We get to kill it. It does come back. They draw two cards. Lurus can bring back all the glitters and Kai's ghost form. Well, not both next turn, but we get Lurus. We, oh, come on. Why in the world would you not? All right. Oops. Yeah, this is this is a really hard matchup. I think that if we were on the play, if we had a little bit more of an aggressive hand, and they just didn't have the nuts, we might have had a better shot. <laughs> but you know, it's hard to beat the nuts. The nuts are hard to beat, man. That sounds so bad. <laughs> Ooh, add a wayfarer. Could have done that a little better there. Yeah. Pumping like crazy. Yeah, this one's just done. Like, I do think that we could play the really, really long game. We have Lurus out, so we can do stuff. But the issue is that they can just give protection. With double all the Life's Bounty, they can eventually just give him enough protection to get through all of our creatures. And we're not going to beat that. Up against Yak Man, and lots of one-drops with Worthy Knight. Mm -hmm. seems, seems pretty good. 
So what we could do is wait and play Worthy Knight first. Hopefully it survives and then play a bunch of one drops after the fact. Let's go for that. Why not? All right. So Blood Crypt tapped. Pass the turn. I'm playing Blood Crypt because that may show us like look like we're playing a different version. All right, Worthy Knight. That's the turn. Now we're, oh, Lucky Clover. They do get to kill lots of things with that. All right, so, Vulnerable Knight. Knight of the Even Legion. And Knight of the Even Legion is gonna get pumped here because of the Fervent Champion pump. Ooh, this looks this feels really good. Alright, swing in. And pump. Pump the Knight of the Eden Legion. Oh man, that's a good turn three. That is really good. Maybe it was better to go ahead and play out like Venerable Knight first for a bit more damage. I don't know. Beanstalk Giant, this is this is good. They got the Lucky Clover on turn two, which means I'm terrified. But if we can find Unbreakable Formation, we only have two copies. It's not very likely. Yeah, balances some good steps. All right, so let's go Worthy Knight and a Stormfist Crusader. Swing in for a lot. Down to five, past the turn. And see, this is where hopefully they don't have ways to uh, to wipe the board. We're wide enough now that we should be able to finish the game. Yeah, okay, so that, that should just be game. They get to play two spells. They can bounce two things, kill two things with bone pressure, but that this should just be the game. Especially with the one we're at point of damage with Stormfist Crusader. All right, creates two blockers, still fine. Ooh, and Inspiring Veteran. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, there we go. I mean, we had it already. That just, like, doubly gives it to us. Dude, this deck is feeling great. All right, this hand looks beautiful. Dude, I don't think I've had, like, a bad hand yet with this deck. It's been sweet. <laughs> I mean, like, this is probably, like, one of the weakest hands that we've had. And I still love the curve. We have Dire Tactics to kill things. All right, if they're playing blue, this is probably the Lazav version of this. I've seen it a couple times. I've never really seen it go off. All right, Vulnerable Knight, Venerable Knight. Excuse me. Everything's a human so far, so Fightus 1 isn't quite as good, but Dire Tactics gets even butter. Borat. Whoa, that's different. I think that we still go for our game plan here and just play Worthy Knight, swing in, get damage dealt. The issue here is that they're probably going to have flame sweeps. So we're trying to get to where we can hold up fight as one for next turn. That's the dream. Myers Grasp, okay. Well, bummer. Now we might go for, I, mean, I should have shocked in Black Man or something. We'll see. Unbreakable Formation. Do we go for Removal now or go for Stormfist Crusader? Giving them card draw is not really great for us either. Dude, Luris and Dorad. I actually want to play this deck now too. Luris is just so good. <laughs> um... All right, let's, let's go ahead and play this out. We get to hold up protection. Oops, swing in. Down to 14. We're taking three every turn. They're for sure gonna be able to play some more stuff though. So, I mean, as long as we get to this dire tactics, we should be okay. Using that word very loosely, should. Oh man, don't shit on yourself. It's terrible. <laughs> All right, pass the turn. 
Grixis Dorat Luris. Kind of love it. I feel like it's got to be a little bit difficult to play, but Dorat is powerful enough to be worth doing stuff with. And the question here is, can we win th through the Dorat versus Luris? Like if they do just play out Luris, we probably Dire Tactics that, hope that we can find more stuff. Okay. Discovery, yeah, it pumps the team. Swings in for a bunch and a half. We're doing more damage to ourselves. Oh no, oh no, we're so close to not being in a good shape here. <laughs> Myers Grasp in the Graveyard for Lurus to be able to play that next turn. So we're losing our creatures as well. Down to eight. So I think we have to go for Dire Tactics this turn. Pass in my turn. Taking more damages. So we can Knight Dire Tactics not hold up fight as one. I'm definitely not shocking myself here. But I think that we do need to put more stuff on the board. Oh, now I have to shock myself. Dang it, I wasn't thinking about that. Oh no. Okay, how close are we just being dead? Okay, Dire Tactics. That was a misplay. So if they get to cast two spells, we kill ourselves with Stormfish Crusader. Yeah, I just, we had the Dire Tactics to not be dead, like straight up dead, just for with one spell. This way we might have a shot of not being completely dead. <laughs> um, let's see what they take. If we can keep Unbreakable Formation, we actually might be able to close it out next game. And we could also close it out with fight as one. So, I mean, if they do swing in here, they have to get one more point of damage and Swordfish Crusader kills us. Let's see if they recognize that. I mean, you should be playing lots of spells, right? Which is what you're doing. All right, and we, we are dead. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe. I should have. Yeah, whatever. If they swing in, we're dead. So let's see if they actually recognize that. Okay, yeah, good game. Yay for drawing more lands. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this deck was like almost perfect. We played seven games. And I won five out of the seven. That's a pretty good run. Like, that's not too bad at all. And I played uh, a little bit here. So let's go ahead and go to the, the wrap up with this one. Uh, and I'll pull up the statistics here. Uh, it takes a little bit to pull up. But uh, with Luris, I think, I honestly, I didn't even use Luris that much. It, the rest of the deck is really powerful. Luris is just kind of there because every once in a while, it, honestly, it's almost more of a mind game for your opponent. Just like, man, I, I can't deal with it again if everything comes back with Luris. Uh, and I found that people scoop to the idea of Luris almost more than actual Luris doing Luris things. Uh, well, it didn't it didn't pop up, but basically I've played nine games with this, and I've won um, one. Let's see, was it six out of the nine? So I did lose three, and one of them is in free play, or two of them were in free play. Uh, but against good decks as well. So anyway, I think this deck is really powerful. I think that uh, I'm actually surprised it's not being played a bit more. And, and I think it is because there's just some some weaknesses to it overall. And maybe it's not as good in best of three or whatever. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much and bye-bye.